Human error is the term often used to explain the cause of an incident, but this is only a first step. There are different types of human error with different causes, which is important for prevention. Some actions people call human error are not actually errors at all. The first type of problem is when we have a good plan of action, but we make a mess of it. We call this a slip. Slips are the result of skilled, automatic processing without paying sufficient attention. Like taking an exit too early on a highway. You may be distracted or not concentrating too hard on the road. Suddenly you take an exit, but it was the next one you wanted. Another way to make an error is to forget something. We call these lapses. This is when you discover you've gone past your exit. Both slips and lapses are failures of automatic processing. When a good plan goes wrong, you didn't mean to take the wrong exit, but you don't always pay the attention you should. Lapses happen when our memory gets overloaded and flushes out what we should have remembered. Good plan, lousy execution. We're also good at solving problems. When this goes wrong, we call it a mistake. Mistakes happen when we fail to understand the world and come up with a lousy plan, usually one we can carry out perfectly. You're driving along a familiar road, and suddenly you're faced with a diversion. You may have to decide whether to go left or right. Get it wrong, and you'll find yourself in all sorts of trouble as you become totally lost. You thought you knew how to get to your destination by another route. You were wrong. And spend ages getting back on track. Mistakes are caused by failures to solve problems. Nothing beats people for solving new problems when they have the time. When they are under time stress or simply don't know all the facts, people can still come to some conclusion. And if that's wrong, we call it a mistake. Lousy plan, execution is not the problem. All these errors are unintentional. We didn't mean to do what we did in the case of slips and lapses. We didn't intend to make a mess of solving a problem in the case of a mistake. These errors happen as part of being human. It's the way we're wired up. However, there's one other sort that's quite different from the rest. Not an error, but intentional. We call this a violation, when someone does what they know they shouldn't. Let's first look at violations in some more detail. Why do we worry about violations? The answer is that there is an equation: violation plus error equals disaster. This means that it takes two components to have a disaster. Someone has to be bending the rules, and someone else makes an error. An experienced electrician decides to work on high-voltage equipment without full isolation. Just telling people not to switch power on in order to avoid a shutdown. He's always been successful until the day someone, in error, switches power on, thinking he is switching it off because of a badly designed switch. Bang. Just like different types of errors, we also distinguish different types of violation. Unintended violations. Where people either aren't aware there's a rule or procedure, or because it's so complicated that people don't really understand it. Routine violations. Everyone does it like that. It's the accepted practice. Situational violations. The situation means I just can't do it according to the rules. Optimizing violations. I get things done in a way that's faster, or pleases the boss. Or that just works better for me. And exceptional violations. There are no procedures except for general guidelines that may be hard to follow. Just try lying down in front of a grizzly bear and stay very, very still. Now, who violates? In a study in the North Sea, we found that it's possible to discriminate between two sorts of people called sheep and wolves. In addition, we found whether they had bent the rules in the previous six months. This we called their clothing. If they hadn't bent the rules, they were in sheep's clothing, while those who admitted to violating recently were wearing wolves' clothing.
Sheep are the guardians of high standards. Wolves are opportunistic go-getters who find new ways of working. Sheep in sheep's clothing are needed to operate in hazardous environments. Successful organizations need both animals, but in the right balance and in the right positions. Wolves in wolves' clothing are well known and can be identified. What we found offshore was that the majority of people, almost two thirds, including workforce, supervisors, and especially managers, were all wolves. But most people wore sheep's clothing, so the biggest single group offshore were wolves in sheep's clothing. If given the opportunity, they'll break the rules. These surprises are waiting to appear like bolts from the blue. Do you now think differently about human error? How will you use this to understand others' actions?